Well, isn't isn't it uh, a lovely day to wake up and find out that, what is today? Today is the 12th. Yesterday it officially started that between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there will be lack of police on staff and answering services will be picking up the phone instead of police staff. The defund the police movement has destroyed the network of uh, care for police officers and care for the citizens that are in towns um, because it stripped them of financial assets that help provide that care and stuff that civilians need, the security that civilians need. The Democratic Party has perpetuated and drove, driven this, this movement of hate for police and hate for law and order, hate for um, any type of person and authoritative figure in general. And they have pushed and pushed and pushed people to not respect and not uh, appreciate the care um, that the law enforcement officers provide us. And when we don't have them, we see the chaos that ensues, such as uh, the Chad, the zone where they, that they took over and there was no police, no nothing involved, and, and somebody got shot and, and died. And what happened, the mother came back and tried to sue the city. That's what they wanted. That's what this Chaz group, Chad group, Chaz group wanted. They wanted no law and order, and this is what happened. Well, now Pittsburgh... 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., it's going to answering staff or answering service type calls unless it's an emergency and some type of AI system can pick it up and push it where it needs to go. They're only going to have between 25 and 63 officers on staff at any given time between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. And one of uh, the act most active cities during the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. It's not a great idea. Some people are calling it the purge or whatever is going to end up happening. I wouldn't really call it the purge. It's a little far-fetched. Not Nobody's saying that no officer is on staff, but why even thin them out to the point where you'd do that? And then they're going to switch them from five eight-hour shifts to four ten-hour shifts. That might be more beneficial to the officers to give them more time off in a longer fashion so they can rest and recuperate. But can you imagine all the problems that could happen between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning and have no help because it's not an emergency? Somebody's breaking into your car or in your house when you're not there or stealing something from, you know, whatever grocery stores are open that late or convenience stores. And by the time anybody gets the emergency message that help is needed, it's already passed off to an answering service, to an AI service, from an AI service to some dispatcher that may be on staff somewhere if you're lucky whoever thought that was a great fucking idea what a bunch of dummies democrats that's why i'll never vote for a democrat again never again i voted for a democrat before and i'm not proud of it because i was fooled i was bamboozled by a silver tongue speaking soothsayer i guess you would say barack obama him and Michelle Obama and all their promises they made to the city of Chicago and stuff where I'm from and that they're going to do X, Y, Z and they're going to make the schools better and everything else and it was nothing but a big fat fucking lie. And the only thing they brought to the table was Obamacare and that's a disaster in itself. People that didn't have insurance was able to get insurance and get on assistance. People that did have insurance, their rates went up and it went up substantially. The middle class was targeted heavily with Obamacare Insurance that used to cost seven, eight hundred dollars a month for a family of three is now uh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars a month. What a disaster! Anyway, I digress. Thursday night in Brighton Park, about four thirty, two men got shot. Two vehicles pulled out of the gas station to shell right on the corner where my business is at, and they went down one block. And a guy pulled up next to him in an SUV that came out of the same gas, gas station that they did and started opening fire on the vehicle. They don't know who it is. The police came to my business yesterday. It was extracting the rear camera data that goes through the neighborhood towards the gas station on a, on a file. And they weren't successful the first time. They went back to their office and they were like, it didn't take. We got to go back into your security system and do it again. So they went back and they did it again. And... 
it's shocking the fact that the crime is up so high in our area. It seems like it's almost normal now. When the police officers were there, I was like, man, this is crazy. This is happening all over the place. And the, the one police officer from the IT unit in the police department was like, yeah, we're here every day almost in this area. It's getting ridiculous, man. There's always something going on here. And that's the area that they wanted to put the migrant shelter in. They got taken down by the EPA because of contamination in the ground. And the basically the land has to be excavated to even do anything about making it inhabitable for people to be on top of that land. So they wasted millions of dollars in that on that land of the taxpayers' dollars and then had to strip everything down and move it. It's pretty sad. But it happened. And then recently, Vega Access did a, a story on migrants complaining about stuff. And one of the snippets inside his video, he talked about a mom that was from Venezuela or whatever. She, was, she came here illegally. She made it into the United States, went to New Jersey, left her three kids, infant kids that are like, look like they were like seven, eight, nine years old, in the desert with other people that they don't belong to. The kids frightened, terrified, made it over the border. And then the, the media wants to spin it as this is some kind of uh, a glorious re um, reunion between mother and child and not spinning it as the fact that this fucking woman left her kids with somebody she didn't know in the desert so she could get into the United States first without them and then begged and pleaded the media and everybody else to figure out who these kids are and reunite them with their, their, their mother so they could live on government assistance. If that would be me or you, we would be in fucking jail right now. And those kids would be in some kind of foster home or group home somewhere. But they get special treatment. We don't. Americans get fucked around the clock. And that's how it is. That's the new norm now. Is we take it up to Wazoo. No lube, no nothing. And we're supposed to just be okay with it. And there's not a lot of people talking about this shit. There's, why do you think there's, there's, there's reasons why I'm not involved with specific people and stuff anymore is because they don't want to talk about this stuff and it was kind of becoming an issue. I'm not, I don't care. I'm not going to be silent about shit. This is a problem and it needs to be talked about and it needs to be spread as far and as wide as it possibly can. Y'all be safe. Be blessed. Keep your family close. Understand that we're in a time right now of a lot of uncertainty. And until Donald Trump becomes the next president, we ain't going to be safe. It's going to be chaos. And the Democratic Convention's coming up in August. Supposedly the black community has went on the national television and said, do you think that it's going to be peaceful after all the stuff you guys as Democrats have done to us and ruined our lives and spit in our face and said we didn't care the migrants, are, the, the migrants mean more than us Americans do? You think you're going to come to Chicago and have a Democratic convention in August and it's going to be peaceful? Hell no. It's going to get rowdy. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Love y'all. Be blessed.